Pats is Ask Steve. Mule and donkey questions answered. It has been weeks. It has been a long time coming. And we are here and we are ready to answer every mule and donkey question that's ever been asked. My name is Dave Shrine and this is Steve Edwards. And you are tuning in to the very next, the very beginning of this season of Ask Steve. Steve Edwards, how the heck have you been, my friend? Oh, my golly, it's been a long month since we've uh, been here on air. Of course, I've talked to you a few times over that time frame, you know, and this sort of thing, but we're doing good. We're, we've been getting lots of rain, lots and lots and lots of rain. Almost Is it raining out inches. by where you're at right now? Uh, it's, uh, it's trying to. Um, it's looking like it wants to rain here where I'm at. I'm not sure if it's going to. My wife just messaged me. She's in between where the two of us are. She says it's raining there. So she's got it right there. Let's see if she can split the difference and send it go. one side either way. Um, yeah, it has been a little bit of time. I travel a little bit. I, I was uh, I was in um, Nashville. You ever been to Nashville? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was in Nashville. Yeah. I went through Paducah, Kentucky. That's where my family's at. Yeah, been through there. And uh, went down to Houston. So it was a, 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 well, and I went to California with the family too. It was a lot of fun. Did you travel at all this summer? Did you find yourself anywhere outside of Arizona? No, I stayed in Arizona. What better place to stay than Arizona? You know, and I especially well, you know, go to California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got some stuff going on there. They still got some stuff going on there, but you know what? No matter what happens in California or any of these other states, the mule and the donkey keep trucking, and yeah. uh, and and we're going to keep on talking about it. Folks, we are so glad to have you join us for, like I said, the first episode of this season of Ask Steve Mule and Donkey Questions Answered. This is a live mule and donkey clinic, and if your standards are a little bit lower, we'll talk about horses too. It happens every single Wednesday. Uh, occasionally, we may miss one here or there if uh, something comes up, but we try to show up every single Wednesday now through uh, around December. We'll take a little bit of a break in December for the holidays and whatnot. Uh, but up until then, we are going to show up every single Wednesday and we'll spend time with you answering any questions that you got because our hope is that you gain the trust of your animal and you get the results when you out when you're out there invest in your time with them and so the way this works is i have a collection of questions and uh, some of the questions that we're going to talk about today that i've already got written down has to do with bits has to do with bucking mules has to do with pack animals uh, so we've got different questions coming up but the wow. thing that really steers this show is everyone who joins us and watches us live like you are right now so really there's three things that we ask first and foremost just let us know that you're watching uh where you're watching from what the weather is like uh what your name is where you're watching from and what the weather is like gotta shake off some of the old rust there uh we want to know that you're watching steve and us we steve and i we can talk anytime we want we text back and forth uh, but we want to know that you're here so in the comment section put your name where you're watching from and what the weather's like that's the first thing the second thing is we want you to ask any and every mule and donkey question that you can think of. Why? Yep. Because we want you to get results when you go out there. And you might think, well, they've probably asked this one before. Uh, they've probably talked about this. And, and, and the truth is we probably have. But you know what? That's okay. Because we're going to answer that question again. And this time we'll probably do it from a little bit of a different angle than we've talked about it before. And... There's going to be someone watching who chances are they either need that information right now or they will very soon. So they'll be grateful that you asked. And lastly, there might have been plenty of times that other folks have heard the answer. But the way we answer it this time is just a little bit different. And it's exactly what they needed to get results. So that's what we're going after today. Um, so go ahead and do that. The last thing that we ask is you just share the broadcast. That is how we get this out in front of more and more mule and donkey folks uh, so they know exactly uh, where they need to go in order to get mule and donkey answers. Steve, anything else you want to say before we start greeting all of our friends here? No, I think we're in good shape for the shape I am. Oh, by the way, I, I had my Lincoln Continental replaced with a cataract operation here. Oh, my goodness. How, how many am I holding up? Nine. Nine. 
It's gonna be a long season. <laughs> it's looking real good now. It's been a great eye. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? What's All right, let's see who we've got here. Uh, we've got Judy watching. It's 62 degrees and sunny here in Lazy Mountain on Lazy Mountain in Alaska. Happy to have you here, Judy. We've got David watching from East Texas. Uh, let's see. We've got John watching. Linda, the mule servant, and Theo, the sweet. One-Eyed Mule from R Thunderstormy Rural Central Ohio. We are glad to have you here, Linda. Tell Theo that we're glad he's back too. Uh, Roger is watching from Milan, New York. He says it is cloudy and 82 degrees. Welcome back. And Roger, thank you so much. It is good to be back. I almost want to start saying, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. I was a musician uh, at another Don't point in time in my job. life. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep this live streaming job. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. We've got Levi hanging out with us. He says, missed y'all's show. Was a muggy day here at, in Albert, Canada. Hey, we've gone international. Oh, that reminds me. I've got to get my, uh, hold on. Hold on, Levi. I got you covered. I got to get my sound effects up. All right. We got to get that glockenspiel going. There we go. We've gone international. Levi, he says, uh, excited for today's show. We are too. Uh, Andrea is here and watching. Andrea in North Carolina. Sunny, 70s. Happy to see you all. We've got Myra. Myra, so glad you're here. Good to see you back. Overcast here in social uh, or SoCal. Hoping for some rain. If you get any, send them our way too. David is watching from East Texas. We've got uh, Carol Joe. Uh, in Parker, Colorado, warm, pleasant day here, she says. James is watching from Western Maryland, 65 degrees, rain. Sheila is watching in muggy Indiana, 82 degrees. Good to have you here, Sheila. Lori is watching in hot, sunny Florida. Herschel is here from Williamsburg, Missouri, 86 degrees and sunny. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with our first question of the day. David asked the question, what is the best way to wean a six-month molly? Let the mare do it, or should I separate them? Steve? You separate them, you know, and you're going to find that uh, it's going to be tough on you. It's going to be tough on the mare. It's going to be tough on the baby. But, uh, you know, that baby is going to be crying out for mama. Mama's going to be crying out for the baby. Uh, and it, my favorite thing to do, if you can do it, is to put the baby a couple miles away where they can't hear it, or Mama, one of the two, uh, and go from there. Because otherwise, I've seen times, Dave, when you can wean off a baby and they never whimper say a word. Then you yeah. have another one that they run up and down the fence line for hours on end. So you never say it's going to be like this with uh, any kind of equine. So, yep, separate them uh, as, as soon as you can. Uh, if it was a John Mule, uh, I would geld him and I would pull his, uh, his, um, uh, oh, lots of, <laughs> uh, wolf tooth, okay? Wolf teeth, Now, yeah. same thing with her. This is a good time to pull her wolf tooth right now. They all got them, folks. So, all your vet has to do is when you got them separated, they can Get up in there and they can pull the wolf tooth out right now. When I'm castrating my babies, I castrate them and I pull the wolf tooth at the same time. Awesome. Very good. And we are, we're going to be shaking off a little bit of rust here. Uh, I think if this had been in May, we would have known uh -oh, wolf tooth dilution. right there. I would. I, I, did you lose me? There was a problem in the network. Well, I can hear you. Can you hear me, that, Steve? Steve, Steve. Let's see. Let me let me send Steve a message. This is the internet for you guys. I can see you. Let's see what Steve says. Are you there, Steve? I'm gonna say maybe call me back. Maybe call back on Skype. All right, let's see. While we're working that out, uh, what is the best way? Sherman is watching Norman, Oklahoma. 83 degrees. Good to have you guys back. Uh, let's see here. Warren in Prescott is watching Prescott Valley, 69 degrees, rain and wonderful. Rex here from Jeffrey City, 77 degrees and cloudy and waiting for a lot of rain this evening. So glad you guys are back. Thank you, Rex. David uh, says, thank you. There you go, David. Uh, happy to answer 
And if you have any follow-up questions, be sure to let me know. Uh, Dennis is here, finally getting much needed rain and 75 degrees in Minden, Louisiana. Uh, let's see here. Steve's calling back in on the Steve hotline. Let's get Steve back on here. Steve, do we have you back on the Steve hotline? Let's see if it's coming up and coming in. Uh, let's see. Lydia is watching from Northeastern Ontario, Canada. We've gone international again. Very, very good. And then let's see here. David says we can hear him. Uh, so hopefully we can get this worked out. Um, and you know what? We may wind up trying to do it with his cell phone. I think we've had some problems with the computer and uh, not quite sure why that is, but we will work it out and get it going. Um, let's see here. Uh, while we're waiting for Steve to get back on the Skype line, what I want to say is if you are watching for the very first time, if you've never joined us before, if you've never hung out with us before, I am so glad that you're here. And really, this show is all about you. It's 100% about helping you get the answers get the results that you need. And so what we would love for you to do is just let us know that you're here in the comment section. Would you put your name, where you're watching from and what the weather's like? That way we can acknowledge you. The second thing uh, that we'd like is if you would go ahead and um, uh, ask any and every question you can think of. And then the third thing is just share and tell your friends. If you're on YouTube, you can click the like button and subscribe. If you're on Facebook, just Type their name into the comment section, and we'll get that taken care of. Steve, thank you for coming back here. I wonder what our problem is. Hopefully, we won't uh, run into it again. Uh, well, I don't know. I went over to see if my internet connection was on, and it said it was on on the other computers. So uh, I've got some ideas for future weeks. Let's just keep plugging away, and we'll we'll get as much as we've done here. Okay, Sheila has a question. She says, I was told if you are not a good horseman, or a beginning rider, you shouldn't even think about getting a mule to ride as they are smarter and they will take advantage of you. Is this true? Hmm. I wonder why they use mules at the Grand Canyon and not horses. I'm Gosh. sure there's a reason. Because they're stubborn? Not. not. Uh, because they're not safe? Not. Uh, because they're super smart? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they're super safe? Yeah. Are they still on equine? Yeah. But wait a minute. If the horse is so good, why aren't they using them at the Grand Canyon? You know? There you are. That's just, we get that done right off the bat. Horses have their place, and every one of them should be raised a mule baby. There you go. Go for it. Go for it, Sheila. You're going to love it. Yep. Uh, you know what, what I found, uh, I'll tell you real quick. So the first time I ever rode a mule, I'd, I'd ridden an equine maybe twice. And the first time I rode a mule, I was about, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, 25, 26 years old, somewhere around there. And I was a little bit intimidated because you're going from, you know, being, I like to think of myself as six, three, really I'm five, nine, but whatever yeah. you're going from however tall you stand on the ground, five, nine and, uh, you know, 160 pounds on a you know, good day, 180 pounds on today. And then, and then you're getting up onto an animal that is just massive, massive size. And that's a lot of animal to have underneath you. And so it was intimidating. And I, I was a little bit scared, but you know, we were ponying, Steve was riding, uh, were you riding Pearl and I was riding Stacy? Yeah. 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 So Steve's riding Pearl. I'm riding Stacy and uh, Stacy's just following behind Pearl. And we come to a little quarry and this quarry, uh, it, by my account, it was steep. And I was actually scared. And I said to Steve, I said, I, I don't know what to do. And he goes, just let go and let her do it. Now this is Stacy. Um, she's a lot of training, great animal, works real hard, but still I'm the first time rider here. And what did she do? One step after the next. You can literally see Stacy figuring out where she wants to put her feet one foot after the next. She goes down, comes right back up. And after that, I was just like, you know what? I, I trust this animal. And there's no safe animal, but there are things you can do to be safe on the animal. And yep. Stacy was a great animal to ride. So Sheila, I'll tell you, from my experience... The few times I've ridden, they're just they're just great. Anything else to add there, Steve? 
No, I, you know, an animal is an animal, period. period. Uh, they do animal they things. Animal things. And that's why we have bits, and that's why we have saddles, and that's why we have different things to for, to help us to be comfortable, but to communicate, you know. And so there's there's nothing finer than a mule. Don't ever offer me a well-trained horse and a green mule. I'll take a green mule, take a green mule just for their natural abilities going up a trail. Yep. Yep. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you asking that question. Um, uh, let's see who was that Sheila uh, Michelle is watching from Palm Beach Gardens Florida uh, we already greeted Lydia uh, Carla says Carla glad to see everybody back from northern British Columbia Canada gone international again cool and cloudy praying for rain we are burning up firefighters are working so hard uh, Steve you know a little bit about that don't you oh boy yes sir we just uh, we just got done fighting this major fire over here uh, called the Telegraph Fire, and it was right next to the Moscow. And uh, that we was 145 degrees on the ground, 115 degrees in the atmosphere. And then we had the flames and the smoke coming in off of that brush and stuff. It was, it was tough. We was, so, folks, we if you hang out with. If you hang out with us week after week, you'll get some firefighter stories. Steve is a volunteer firefighter for the Queen Valley Fire Department. And uh, story after story coming in and uh, just love hearing that. It's a lot of fun and get to know uh, the life of our first responders through Steve. It's really quite something. Uh, Shelly is watching from Sookie, British Columbia. We've gone international again. Mary from Michigan, 86 degrees, partly cloudy. How does your wife like the mustache, she says. So I asked my wife, um, I was like, what do you think? Like, is it, is it, you know, not, is it too much? She says she likes it. So I'm just rolling with it until she says she doesn't. <laughs> so we'll Woo. keep rolling there. Uh, let's see here. Mark is watching from Bon Aqua, Tennessee, 78 degrees and raining. Lisa is watching 77 rain McEwen, Tennessee, uh, let's see. Warren says with all the rain and, uh, all it, with all the rain, uh, the weed growth, is it okay to let Maybell, my mule go out and eat the weeds between eating her Bermuda? hay? Steve, I don't think she's going to eat the weeds. Uh, very few, they have to be mega hungry to even think about eating the weed. Uh, I, I, you know, folks, uh, my preference is they don't need prosperity. And my preference is just feed them what they need, give them that, and that's enough. Now, you all know that when you go to Smorgasbord, uh, I can see what you all look like, and I know, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not all as fit as Dave here, of course, he's 21 years old, too. But anyway, uh, uh, anyway, Giddy up. Folks, they, it makes us feel good. So if it makes you feel good for a few minutes, then go do it, you know, but they, they're not going to eat the weeds. Uh, what needs to be eating the weeds is your weed eater and, and the other grasses and that sort of thing. Just give them consistent feed. Here's the problem, folks. When you go change and feed, now you all get ready for hunting, go Colorado. A lot of you guys are starting to get ready to go hunting in Colorado. Take and be changing your feed over slowly now. Don't go up there and put them on a set of hobbles. And let them eat. I can't tell you how many outfitters and this sort of thing I know that have lost animals to colic because they change feed. Always change feed over a seven to daytime, uh, seven to day, seven to ten a day time frame, and that's the best way to do it. Awesome. I'm putting a link in the comment section uh, for Steve's free video, uh, all about creating a feed and nutrition program. Um, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Get that video, watch it, and then let us know if you have any questions about creating your feed and nutrition program. Uh, real quick, Steve, um, something that comes up season after season, show after show is folks just asking about, um, you know, training techniques and abuse and things like this. And, um, you were talking about food and I don't think folks would really equate food and nutrition with abuse of an animal, but you think differently. Talk to me a little bit about, um, how you see people abusing their animals when it comes to feed and nutrition. Of course, we don't want that. And I know everybody here listening is going to want to hear more about that. Um, what, what do you, uh, what do you have, what do you have to say about that? 
you know, seeing an animal that has been grass foundered from turning them loose in a pasture and eating too much carbohydrates, it is ugly. I mean, it's, um, I, I see myself in the mirror and go, well, look at that fat old guy in there, you know, and, uh, and I know how uncomfortable I am in this sort of thing. But here's the deal. It's really easy to grass founder a mule or a donkey. Really easy. Because they cannot handle prosperity. And that prosperity is the carbohydrates is there. So you put them on a good program and use that program all the way through. All the way through. I can't tell you how many people like at the Phoenix Zoo. Had them on a program. Had been working for years. Same, same program. Animals were all healthy. Everything was doing good. One day, uh, the the manager of the equine program there at the Phoenix Zoo calls me up. I happen to be in Montana. She says, Steve, I've got this problem and this problem. This animal went bonkers, and this animal is laying down a lot. And I said, I said, when did you change feed? And she says, how did you know I changed feed? I figured you was going to say that. And I said, you changed feed, and you've gone to a lot of heavy carbohydrates. And she says, yes, we have. We got a new nutritionist here. She says we weren't feeding our equine correctly, you know. And I said, point out to her the past five years of no problems and see what she thinks. So, folks, it's really important. You know, you need to put your animal on a proper equine feed. You need to have their teeth floated. Every year I have a lady tell me, well, my mule is only five years old. Wait a minute. They still get the sharp points. And if they, they don't have the correct teeth, they can't grind that feed properly. All right. Very good. There you go, folks. We'll talk more and more about this as this season goes. Uh, Michael is watching from North Carolina, 90 degrees, four inches of rain the last two days. Oh my gosh, Michael, stay safe. Uh, let's see. Trinity yeah. is watching. Trinity, good to have you uh, hanging out with us. Glad to have you guys back. Having ear and bridling, bridling problems with the same mule that we had problems with last year. Using your head stall and bit fixed the problem until a couple of weeks ago. Started over again, maintaining lowered head and turned on us. He won't even allow the come along hitch to go over his ears now. How do we win the battle? Steve, this is a great question. Well, yeah, and it and it comes up, unfortunately, they get to a point that they say they got, got you kind of figured out. The biggest number one thing we have to think about, folks, is it's not important to put the bridle on it's, or the come along hitch. It's important that they drop their head, tip their nose to the left. And, and unfortunately, a lot of folks will let them put their bridle on anywhere that the head is there. No, 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 no. Okay. If you want consistency in your mule and your donkey, drop your head, tip the nose to the left. You put your hand upon the pole in behind the ears, put your left hand on the nose, right hand in behind there. And as each time they lower their head, you take your hands off, put your hand back on. They lower the head, take your hands off, put it back on. Pretty soon, the nose is all the way down touching the ground. And folks, that's the idea. Get them mentally ready for what's going to happen to them physically. Next thing, never, ever, ever put on a pre-adjusted bridle. Every time you put a pre-adjusted bridle on, you end up messing with the ears and, and everybody thinks they're ear shy. No, no, no. You bump their mouth. All right. And that bump in their mouth and then pull them back on the ear. Now they're going to be hard to bridle. All right. Now let's go back. He's using the come along hitch. So now do we have to do what we have to do. Well, now is twitch time. Okay. Uh, I, I have a, a video and I have a twitch that I just love. It creates natural endorphins. It's a wonderful tool. I don't use drugs for my mules, folks. Uh, I uh, I use uh, natural endorphins that I use, and we got a video that goes with it. And again, you see me working with my mule, and you see an apprentice, and you see her doing it. You'll see me starting to start, start with where they were trying to put some stuff in the eye and they won't do it. She's flip, flopping his head uh, and, and it's freebie, a uh, mule I had called freebie, throwing its head and this sort of thing and not wanting to do it. Put the switch on, create the natural endorphins, put the, I put the uh, salve right in. Now, let's go back. Okay, Trinity, you're gonna take and 
You're going to go online and you're going to buy the Twitch and the video. There we go. That's number one. Okay. Number two, you're going to start rubbing the animal like it shows in the video. Get a hold of the end of the nose. Remember, remember this. This is really important. Really, really important. That you control and train the mule according to their nose. They understand what's right and what's wrong by the amount of bumping on the nose. So I'm going to take my, my, my twitch and I'm going to put the twitch over my arm as you'll see it in the video. I'm going to get a hold of the nose and I'm going to rub it around. They're going to like that and they're going to drop their head. Then I'm going to pull the twitch over. And I'm going to put the twitch on the nose. I'm going to open and close it. I'm going to create natural endorphins when they get quiet. Then I'm going to put my come along hitch on. Then I'm going to put my bridles on or whatever. Okay. Now, remember, uh, when you take that twitch off and, and, and as you're rubbing on them and this sort of thing, you take the twitch off. Immediately takes a little timing on your part. Go ahead and put your bridle on or go ahead and put your, your come along hitch on while the natural endorphins are kicking in their mind. Okay. Again, watching the video, that right there is going to show you how to do it. Awesome. Very good. And as always, Trinity, as you do it, if you want to reach out to Steve, you can, but keep us in the loop and let us know how we can help help you. We want to help you. Um, folks, if you are just tuning in for the very first time, I want to say welcome. You're back. Uh, we're back. <laughs> hopefully you're back. Hopefully back. we've seen you before and hopefully you'll be back. But we are back for our next season of Ask Steve Mule and Donkey Questions Answered. And uh, we want to know that you're here. Please just take a second in the comment section, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, just to say your name, what the weather is, uh, where you're watching from and what the weather's like today. We would just love to know that you're here, acknowledge you, uh, just say, hey, it's good to meet you. And, uh, and if you have any questions, you can put those in the comment section as well. There's no dumb questions. There's no uh, elementary questions. There's no question. That, you know, if anybody asks quote unquote dumb questions, it's going to be me because I am not a cowboy. I am not a mule man. I am not an equine person at all. I have the information, but I don't have the understanding. And so a lot of times I'll even ask questions that other people might think are dumb, but I'm happy to ask them because I really want to know. So ask any and every question that you got and then just share the broadcast. If you're on YouTube, click like and subscribe. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and click the share button or um, tag a friend or family member who you think would appreciate uh, hanging out with us. Tag them in the comment section. Jane is watching from Florida. We've got Beth watching from New Hampshire. Uh, Di is watching. Uh, great guys from AZ. Here we go. Good to have you, Di Shaw. We've gone international. Um, let's see here. Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota. We've got, uh, David watching from Port Angeles, Washington. I should be mowing the yard, but this is more fun. Welcome back. Hey, David, we're glad to be back and we're <laughs> glad that you're here. Uh, Ashley is watching. It's so nice to see your show again. Just in time. I'm back in Texas after a month in Mexico. It's exceptionally wet week here in Texas and it's wet out here in Arizona too. Ashley, we'll tell you that much. Uh, we've got Judy yeah. watching says great news. My mule and I I placed second in North American Trail Ride Conference Competition Trail Ride last month here in Alaska. Izmi was the only mule in the competition. A lot of our success was due to the saddle I purchased from you. The saddle and the tack are amazing on the mountainous terrain here in Alaska. My question is, have you considered offering an endurance saddle? So first off, Stephen, what Steve, what is the difference between a, a trail riding saddle and an endurance saddle? And then have you ever considered offering one? Okay, yeah. I tell you what, people, what they consider with this endurance thing is no horn. They take the horn off, and then they call it an endurance saddle. I'm going to tell you, I've yet to have anybody, anybody happy with taking the horn off their saddle because they're only doing it a short time. Now, folks, I've been riding for almost 60 years and I've been riding with a horn. And even though that horn doesn't make any noise at all, I still like having it there. So there you go. So if you nope. want to make, if you want to saddle without a horn, we have to have a tree made and we can do it, you know, but you're not saving any weight. And that trail light saddle is a super light saddle. A lot of people use for endurance. I'll tell you what, uh, one of the other questions we get quite 
quite regularly is, do you have any used items for sale? And the answer we have is, no, we don't. Number one, because when people buy stuff from us, it's all made in America and it lasts. And so the the need for folks to come back over and over and over again, they may want to have a second one, but they don't come back to replace what they've got unless they just want something different for looks or maybe some of the things they want to do with their mule is different. But, but these items last. So number one, we don't have it. Number two, if there is used stuff out there, um, they're very, very hard to come across because, again, folks hold on to it. One thing that we've ha- we have heard is that it's harder to sell a used saddle that has no horn than one that has it. So folks buy them and they keep them, but the resale value in the market just goes way down if ever you decide you're not going to ride anymore, uh, you don't need them. And so having that horn is a big selling point should you ever decide you want to change saddles. Uh, get one of Steve's additional uh, other saddles and, you know, trade them out. Um, or you don't want to ride anymore. Or just something changes and, and you've moved on. So that's just something else to consider. Uh, that comes in, uh, in in every now and again, folks, and asking about that. Shelly is watching, says, great advice, makes logical sense. Thanks so much, Shelly. I'm sure it's something Steve said, but um, we'll ta- I'll say thank you for him. Uh, Mark says, I don't have a sacrifice area. So my mules, donkeys, and horses are on pasture 24 seven. Will the self right? Will they self regulate their eating or will they overeat? No, they will overeat. And it's not a matter of overeating. It's a matter of eating the high carbohydrate speed, especially in the spring when the sugar content is really heavy. Um, folks, listen, it, it doesn't take much to build a corral. It don't. Uh, and, and, and for your mule's sake, for your donkey's sake, I've, I've seen some awful, awful mules and donkeys that have been grass foundered, and it can go on farther. I mean, it can get a lot worse than just grass foundered, but still, they're big, heavy necks, big, heavy uh, places on their rumps, all across the top of the fat, of the fat pockets. It's, it's not good for them, folks. You know, they will not self-regulate. They will eat. There you go. Uh, okay, moving right along here. We've got um, Facebook is jumping all over the place. YouTube is too. Uh, Roxette is watching in New Hampshire. We've got Mike watching in New Mexico. Clout, hot, cloudy, hot. Glad you are back. We missed you. We missed you too, Mike. Thank you. Rip is watching seven and a half today. What a mess. Seven and a half inches, Rip, of rain? It's raining no. here right now. It, it just started raining here now. I've is got, that is it I've that much rain, Rip? Oh yeah. my gosh! I've got over six inches here, Dave. No and joke. It's raining oh. out here right now. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's a mess. With Rip. What's I was that? Just talking with Rip. I'm just talking with Rip now, folks. Get this in your mind. Here's a rancher who uses his mule. He's had this taking this mule a long ways, and this guy ain't no wimp. He's a big stout guy. And he flat rides, I mean, some of the toughest country. If you think you got tough country, you multiply it by five, and you'll even come close to the smallest place on his place that's, that's, that's easy to do. It's tough. Straight up, straight down. Now, he called me, he said, Steve, I want to sell my mule. I said, Rip, what do you do that for? He said, I'm getting ready to have shoulder surgery. And he said, I hate to have my mule standing that long. And I said, Rip, ain't no big deal. Let the mule stand. And if even if there is a problem, I'm close. Yep, yep. For my buddy Rip, I'll come on over there. Matter of fact, me and Randy both have already talked about it. And, we, you know, we'd come over there and, and just a, a drop of the hat. Now, all the fences in that fire that they had literally melted. And all of his cattle are scattered all over the reservation and a lot of places. So Randy and I are going to go up there and give him a hand. But, hey, Rip. You keep that meal. Don't worry about it. We'll get that meal lined up for you. It'll be a good meal we get done with it. Dave's going to write it for you. Yeah, I'll take care of it for you. Uh, Megan sent a really cool message in at the end of last season. She says, hey, Steve. Hey, Dave. Wanted to give you all an update on my donkey, Sam- Samson. Been working with him the last couple months using the come-along rope. The main reason I got it was to train him to stand still for hoof work. It was getting to the place where he was fighting so hard 
someone was bound to get hurt. I am so thankful I came in contact with Steve and his techniques because it works wonders. Samson is learning by leaps and bounds and surprised us all when he let my dad was, uh, was, has spent very little time handling him. Let my dad walk right up to him, rub him down, pick his hoof up, uh, and pick his hoof up and clean it out. He had no halter or anything. He just stood quiet as you please. Thank you so much. Also eager to hear about update on how things are going for Nancy and her donkey. She was told to give up on according to a previous stream. Y'all take care. Isn't that a cool, isn't that a cool story, Steve? That's, that's I, you know, I hear that so many times every week, Dave, where people says I'm, I'm, I was giving up. I was done. And then it comes, then comes along to come along. You know, yeah. and that come along hitch, folks, you cannot, don't depend on your halters. Don't depend upon them. Everybody says, well, I'm getting the halter so I can train on my mule. No, 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 no. Start with the come along first. Now, let me ask you something. Hey, Dave, you probably like I do. We watch Grit on TV, the old Westerns, you know, because oh, yeah. uh, I don't have cable TV. So I just got regular TV, but we got a, a channel called Grit. G-R-I-T-T, and it does all the old cowboy movies, you know? Yeah. I mean, you got them all out there, all the old guys, Gabby Hayes and all of them, you know? So here, let me ask you something, folks. When you see them cowboys ride up, do they got a halter on them? No. Do they take their reins and just throw around two wraps on the hitching post? Yes. Oh! Oh, they tied the reins. Oh, no, they didn't tie the reins, folks. All they did was throw a look couple loops around. Bit and all. Standing there. Do you see the mules move? Do you see the horses move? They stand quiet. Why? Why is that? Because their halter foundation is done. Done. You don't need the halter as you go through life. When you, when you see us out punching cows, we ain't got a halter on. If I'm going to stand one stand for any length of time, and I got no choice of catches to tie to, uh, I hobble them, and they stand still. Why is that? They've got so much respect for those hobbles and for that, that come along work that we had done to them. Yeah. Believe me, them old cowboys, they roped them, they choked them down. They, were, they knew what leading was about before. They even put a, a, a halter on them. And those were all, you know, uh, what we see today. Mm -hmm. But anyway, long story short, now here's the next part, Dave, as long as I'm touching on the halters and the tying them up. Notice, folks, watch the old videos. Go to Grit. You, how many of you watch Grit? See if it comes on there, Dave. Ask how yeah. many people watch Grit. Yeah, in the comment section, folks, go ahead. Give us a shout out. Uh, give a uh, yes, I do in the comment section if you watch Grit. Okay. Now, the next part. When you see them old cowboys get on their horses and ride, do you see them put their hand on the cantle and the hand on the horn to get up? Nope. What do you see? Hand on the horn, hand on the mane, and they get in the saddle. You don't see them. Now, these are most of these guys are working cowboys. Ben Johnson, working cowboy. He was right here in Arizona. He lived, he lived 30 miles from me, okay? And, uh, and, and a good rodeo cowboy as well. A lot of those old cowboys and those westerns were, were working cowboys that they needed to have on that scene. But you watch them, folks. Watch those old movies. Nobody's got a halter on. Nobody. Next thing, nobody grabs that cantle to, to get in the saddle. You want to get in the saddle? Hand on the horn. Hand on the mane. Climb up in. There you go. Hop up in there. Yeah, folks are saying that they watch Grit, and some folks are saying, I'm going to have to see if I can get Grit. Uh, speaking of Grit, uh, we've got somebody who needs some true Grit here to get through uh, problems with their animal. This one comes in from Gail. Now, you may have already spoken with her, but I told her that I was going to add it to the show, and I said... Um, I said that we would be answering it here on the 18th. So she says, here's my problem. My horse trainer friend offered to help me with Benny the mule, you know, to make sure he is safe for us to trail ride. Eh, safe doesn't exist. You can do things that are safe, but safe doesn't exist. Anyways, let's keep moving on. This involved lots of long, long, longing, lunging, which he tolerated for two weeks, then blew up. We've heard that. People I bought him help? from yeah. sight unseen said that he was four H mule. What does 4H mean? 
4-H means it's a it's a farmer's program ah. that young kids get into. Okay. And they show their their pigs and their goats and okay. and mules. 4-H like yeah. mule and went to shows in Trail Road. They claimed to use a miler bit, which I tried on him, sweet iron, low port, sh short shank, and he totally disrespects me and the bit. Dentist is coming tomorrow. Yep. There was a two-month wait. He had great disposition and is great on the ground. Should I try your twisted snaffle bit that you recommend or try the trail bit? And I may have to have the saddle a little too far forward. I might need more work than I might need more work than Benny. <laughs> so Steve, there's a lot here, which is why I wanted to yeah. do it. Um, yeah. Let's start with the lunging blew up by sight unseen, been there, done that mule. Uh, go for it. Okay. You hear that folks been there, done that mule kids showing the mule kids being in those type of programs, doing halter foundation, showing the mule okay now can they do western pleasure classes in the saddle yeah they can do that too but listen folks hear, hear what they just said hear what they just said they were lunging for two weeks and now the mule blew up they could care less about lunging folks that's this is a mule when you lunge not only are they going to get tired of you listen listen pulling on their face because here's the thing as that mule is going around you're pulling on that rope and every time you pull, you're irritating that mule. And you got you got a thousand pounds on the end of that rope. And that rope's got, you know, 20 foot of rope. You got a lot of leverage. And unless you're bumping, but here's the problem. People have got the, the lead rope in one hand and whip in the other. Not. All you're doing is putting tons of pressure on that mule. And we've already heard it. Two weeks he was done. Actually, folks. After the first three or four times he was done, the mule finally found a way out and did it. Okay? Now, that's why I keep telling you, you, go ahead and try it. I've already been there, done it. If you've done it two times, I've done it 42 times trying to get it figured out. So no lunging. Now, here's the next bit. Here's the next thing. Bits. Folks, the bit is designed for what animal out there? Go to any store. Milers make awesome bits. They're an incredible bit maker, okay? And they're over there in Mar Marshfield, Missouri. And Dale Milers, a, a, a great a bit maker and this sort of thing. Uh, and, and his brothers, they're all, uh, they're all excellent horsemen, okay? But it's not a mule. It's not a mule. I had my bits designed from what I learned from the mule. Now, my bit maker is Rainsman. Been making bits for years. Uh, uh, a good friend of mine, I'm, this is his first name, I'm just going to say, well, his name's Steve Tucker. Steve Tucker owns Circle Y and Rainsman, several others. Wonderful Christian man, solid guy. Okay, going back, they make my bits. They're American made, but they're made out of special steel for the mouthpiece. It's completely different port, folks. Completely different type of shank that you need. If you go to this tax store, you're buying horse, you're riding mule. Okay? That's what you're doing. So why are you having problems? Horse tack on a mule. Horse training on a mule. Folks, I know I'm maybe the long ranger here, huh, Dave? You know, uh, and, and, and you all, if you if you'll go back for years, you're going to hear me saying the same thing. Identical. Already been there. Already done that. So the lunging, not, okay? Especially with a rope halter. Oh my goodness. You can't believe the bad habits that's being taught because the halter is misadjusted. I'm really on my soapbox here, Dave. Uh, the, the, halter is, the halter is misadjusted and you're pulling on the wrong places. Oh look, Fluffy is going around. Isn't that nice? Oh, next time we do it, well, Fluffy is not doing quite so good. And now Fluffy is skiing and you're pulling Fluffy. And Fluffy, you say, well, Fluffy, no, no, Fluffy did this clear back, way back when, but we don't see it. Yeah. We've got to watch for the small things, folks. Watch for the small things. If you feel that mule on that lead rope, you're pulling too much. If you bump it and he responds, got it. Got it, you know, horse bits, horse training. Here's the proof right here, Dave. Yeah. That's the proof. Y'all heard me say it. 
And you've heard other people say, right, here's the proof. They quit. So a couple things. Number one, huh. we've got more weeks coming up, Steve. <laughs> yeah, we do. You don't have to work at all. <laughs> Let me get my breath back. Ah, okay. We've got plenty of weeks. We will be able to talk about it. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to say is uh, Steve can talk about it until he's blue in the face, and he will get blue in the face uh, sometimes yeah. talking about it. But here's the deal. Um, again, I don't know this stuff. I have the information. I don't have the understanding. What I do know is that I am the one who gets the messages saying I used the come along rope and it and everything changed. I used your rope halter and everything changed. Those are the messages that I get. And so, um, and I get the messages of folks saying lunging and this sort of thing. And we reply back, don't do that. Do ground foundation training instead. Get the ground foundation starting kit. Watch the problem mule video and start there. And I get the messages back saying, oh my gosh, I wish I would have done this sooner. We, we're not here. And th if this is your first time ever hanging out with us, it's important for you to hear this. We are not here to sell you tack. We're not here to sell you videos. We're not here to sell you anything. We are here to make sure you get answers and that you're able to get out there and enjoy the pleasure of of riding and owning and driving and packing. That's what we want for you. Some of the yeah. things that we're going to suggest are free. Some of the things that we're going to suggest are easy to do. Some of the things that we are going to suggest are difficult and involve lots of patience. And some of them are going to cost money. It's up to you what to do with the information at that point. And so we're just going to shoot straight with you. And the, and in the same breath that I say, we don't, we don't tell you to buy anything. There is one thing that we almost tell, we say, you have to buy this. Yeah. And we put it on a special deal so that it, it saves you money and, and, and you just read the reviews. We're, we don't want you to have it because we want to sell more product. We want you to have it because we get results. And it's called the Ground Foundation Starting Kit. And I'm going to put a link in the comment section. Check it out. Ask as many questions as you want. We're not afraid of any question here. But if you are having problems, just like Gail, if you're having problems, you know what? I'm not even going to sell it, Steve. I'm just going to tell the folks watching, if you have the Ground Foundation starting kit, just put in the comment section how much it's helped you. That's all I'm going to say about it. You all read the comments as yep. they come through because it's here for you. And so folks who have used that kit, they're going to tell you. Let's keep moving on. Y'all can read that later. Let's help out her first. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Just give me, give me, give me. Okay, fix. Folks, here's the fix. Okay. Here's the fix. Easy. Come along, roll. Put that come along on there and start with small things. Watch the video, folks. The video that you goes along with that with that ground communication kit. Watch that video. Watch the video how to adjust the halter. Now, once you're doing that, folks, it's more important for you to do groundwork than it is to writing. Writing's not the not the not the the end result. Listen. I mean, it's the end result, but it's, it's it takes work to get there. Now we've got to fix problems. Now we got it. Now, it, it, so let's start small. Come along, Hitch. Watch the video. What's the next thing? Okay. The next thing, the bidding. You're going to have to start using the snaffle bit, my Mule Riders Martingale. The Mule Riders Martingale, again, listen to this. Watch the video. Now. I know Dale Myler didn't send you a, a, a video to show you how to use that bit. I know he didn't. Okay. Great guy. Super bit. Great, great bit for a horse. Okay. But listen to that. Here's a bit. Here's a video. Here's a rope. Here's a video. Okay. And plus that, if you want to call me, you know, call me. No joke. Let me help you out. Yeah. You know, I've already had two guys today that I have identical same problems you got right now. One of them's going to see me in Missouri. Hey, did I say Missouri? Yeah. Going to be at Spring, Springfield, Missouri, watching the mule show there and watching my granddaughter. Okay? Watching my granddaughter. That's why I'm there. Do I want to talk to you? Come on in. I'll visit with you. Things like that. You know, uh, matter of fact, uh, one of my friends, Bradley, says he's going to feed me a, a pig burger. Bring some for me. That's all I got to say. That's right. Pig burger. Anyway, long story short, I have already heard this same identical thing twice today. Yeah. Horsemen. Okay. And, and a couple of these, these guys that have been mule folks, 
that are that have trained on this on on this one meal on these meals. He says, Steve, I can't stop the meal. Okay. Uh, anyway, I won't go no further. There you are. How do you fix it? Come along, hitch video. How do you fix it? Meal writers, Martin Gale video. Those two right there, folks. Build a foundation. Tell yourself that for six months you're going to stick with it. And if you'll do it in three months, you'll have the most awesome mule that or donkey you'll ever want. And in six months, you're going to be setting up there communicating correctly. Y'all are going to love it. You're going to love it. Nancy's watching. Uh, Nancy and Donkey here from a balmy 84 degrees, Mountain City, Tennessee. Good news. We can now lift front feet and clean lead and not scared of ropes any more, uh, any, not scared of ropes anymore. Still working groundwork. What we've come a long way. There you go, folks right there. Uh, Marvin 102 need rain. We'll send rain to Marvin. Rip says, yes, rain real bad. Um, Nancy says she's watching from Wheeling, West Virginia, and it's raining there. Rain, rain, rain everywhere. Uh, Mark says, <laughs> follow-up question. How long should animals be on pasture and how long in sacrifice area? Sacrifice area. <laughs> I've never heard that. Is that a, is that an old way of saying it or is it an alternate way? I, uh, a 20 by 20 stall folks. Then I'm out there they... sacrificing them to die, I guess, if they get yeah. colic or founder. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if you want to kill your meal, folks, if you want to, if you want to cripple your meal, yeah. put them out on the pasture. I'm just going to lay it like that. Yeah. Put them out on that pasture. All right. Take a look at this fat boy who has been too many times out on the pasture. I've seen you at Golden Corral, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Golden Corral's right. Okay. Listen, folks, the mules and donkeys can't stand it. They get a big old wide neck. You can't hardly turn them to the right or to the left. They get a big old fat pockets. You cannot be, it's almost impossible to keep a saddle on them, folks. So they don't need it. Take them off of it. If, you, if it makes you feel good, put them out there with a muzzle and, and let them go out there and eat with that muzzle. That way they can get a nibble here and there. But they don't need it, you know. Um, I used to tell folks, put them two hours out there on the pasture, put them the rest of the time in a dry lot, or in this case, the resurrection lot or whatever it's called. That he calls it, you know. Uh, but here, but and you know what? And Mary, I've talked about this before, folks. Now they can't catch the mules because the mules don't want to come in after two hours. They don't need you. Yeah, they don't need to. They don't need it. Yep. Uh, Eric asked a question. Um, I'm going to answer. I'll answer this question here, Stephen. You tell me if uh, if you've got more to, to to add to it. He says, "Why don't more people trail ride donkeys?" From my experience. My my guess at an answer would be because uh, they don't know about them. They don't understand them. They don't know about the donkey. Of course, they're becoming more popular here in the last decade. Yeah. But everyone's all about horse, 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 horse. Um, so my guess is that they don't ride them because they don't know about them. But once they do, they're all about it. What do you say, Steve? Where, do, Steve flying out of the screen? He's gone and find another soapbox. Oh, there he is. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, it says... It, say, it says my meal needs more food on the battery here. Oh, you gotta plug that. <laughs> you gotta plug it in. But I mean, that's what I think. What I've learned just listening to folks is that there's, I, I don't know if I'd call it mystery around the donkey. They, there's just not a lot of folks who have been educated about them. Growing up, it was all about horses. They learned all about the horse, all about the horse. Maybe a mule here or there, and everything that they know about the donkey is donkeys are dumb, and that's pretty much all that they all that they know they, they know donkey from the bible and donkeys are dumb steve any other thing why folks aren't riding them listen it, 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 folks uh, unfortunately uh we tend to have a lot of pride with thinking oh man if we're not riding this good looking horse you know with all the white horses silver saddle stuff but listen them donkeys got great dispositions and that's what a lot of people think they say listen there are several people who sell meal donkeys and they sell them as trained. And they show these donkeys with kids riding them. And everybody's thinking, wow, if a kid can ride it, we're good. Okay. Why is that? Because the disposition of the donkey is so good, you know, they can do it. The problem is the kids are giving lots of bad habits to them donkeys. And I won't touch that one no more. The donkey is a great ride. They're a super easy to ride. I think they're easier to ride than horses by a long ways. 
and they're real close to being easier to ride than mules. All right. Now, listen, here's the big problem with the donkey is they don't have a big enough motor. What's the motor? The hind quarters, the muscles in the hind quarters. There's not enough muscle there. They don't have a good gasket muscle, which is just above the, the, the joint there. And so they really don't have the strength. Can you build them up? Yes. You know, will they have the stamina of the mule or the donkey, uh, or the donkey or the mule or the horse? Not really. But can, if you get a mammoth, you're going to have a little bit more bone, a little bit more muscle. Uh, so uh, the donkeys are wonderful. They're absolutely, absolutely great. More people ought to be riding donkeys. And there are. They're getting to be more and more donkeys. Um, James Montana. Mm hmm my buddy James, he bought a donkey that, that I got from a client and, and trained on that donkey, and then James bought it. Now, here's he wanted this donkey for a lifetime. Now he got his donkey. Well, unfortunately, he has to he sold the donkey. And he sold it to a guy by the name of AJ out of Colorado who bought the other donkey from me. Uh -huh. Anyway, long story short, he had to sell him because his son is uh, uh, needs some special uh, education and this sort of thing, and they have to go to Colorado to do it. And he's a veteran, an Af and uh, a uh, uh, an Afghan uh, Afghanistan veteran, and so he's got all the benefits and stuff. Plus that, he's a uh, uh, special uh, nurse and training and stuff. So he's going to go up there for special education for his son. Very good. Uh, let's hustle through the rest of our stuff here, Steve. We've got a hustle. few minutes left. Uh, Mary says all cowboys and girls watch grit. There you go. Jane says she watches grit every day. Andrea says she's going to see if she can get grit TV. Lisa watches it. Uh, let's see here. Andrea says, I have a donkey. I want a trail ride. I just don't like going out alone. Um, which, Hey, I totally understand. Totally get that. Um, let's see. Yep. Uh, James is watching from Holden, Missouri. Nice to see you guys. Good to see, uh, good to be seen. Good to see you too. Kevin is watching. Hi, Stephen Dave. Hope to see you there. I guess he's talking about Missouri. Uh, let's see. Judy says mules are awesome for trail riding. Uh, Kim says hi from Courage Rock, Indiana. We're listening. We're still riding horses. Reggie says hi from North Dakota. Uh, dry and needing range. Uh, Rip says ranch donkey has more motor in her than a dog and a lot more protective of cattle. There you go. Myra's watching says I watch grit too. So we got quite a few folks uh, hanging out. Steve, we've got a few questions that came through on email that I want to get through. Um, Go. Jan, uh, Janet messaged in. She says, I've invested a year and a half in a 15 year old mule. He bolted on me three months in. I was very injured, had a trainer look at him. He recommended groundwork with flag and a snaffle bit. Did that. Yesterday, he bucked me off as soon as I got on. And thinking I need to rehome him. Not an easy decision, but neither of us is happy. Can't imagine who would want him. I live in Cleveland near Metro Park. Was looking for a trail mule. Think I grossly deceived by the former own owner intentionally or not. I don't think he'll ever be safe, safe to trail ride. There's a lot of surprises in the park. He isn't my first mule. Had a fantastic bomb-proof willing mule for 20 years. 61 I am. An experienced rider, but not a trainer. I work full-time at a farm on a small acreage. I I know you from mules and more, and some people in my Facebook group suggested I contact you. What would you have to say to Janet, Steve? Okay, folks. You know, again, we're talking about a smooth snaffle bit, and and it's it's not a come along hitch, folks. You know, uh, and so the groundwork. If I was going to do it, Jan, and and if you like to listen, disposition first. If you like the disposition, the mule is willing. You like that part. All right, let's start over again. <clears throat> ground communication kit, just like I told the other person. Mule Riders Martingale, just like I told the other person. Watch the videos. And listen, the F-bomb gets thrown around all the time on this show, okay? The F-bomb is free. I've got 350 videos of free, free, free. You are right. You are right. Nobody's going to want to buy the mule, da-da-da-da-da, with it being like that. Now, here's my question. You know, if your groundwork was correct, this mule shouldn't have a problem. The next thing is, when you were right getting ready to climb on this mule, did it have a breaching on it? Did it have a breast collar on it? Did it have a rear cinch? Okay, tell me that stuff as well. 
Let me know what that said. What you say about that? Awesome. Uh, next question here. This one comes in from um, uh, Kareen. She says, "I live in Belgium. I have three mules. I can buy a saddle near us. It's a trail light saddle. I think it's a good saddle to start with. Can you give me your opinion on the bit? One of my mules has no direction. I'm currently riding with a side pull. In Belgium, we don't have a lot of mules and even fewer professionals, so it's not easy to learn more. This is why I allow myself to contact you in advance. Thank you for your." Reply. Apply. Have a nice day. So a uh, couple questions here. Trail ride, tra trail light saddle. Sounds like she can get one used out there. Is that a good saddle to start with? And then she's using yep. a side pull bit. What is a side pull bit, bit and what would you say to her? Okay. Um, side pull is basically a hackamore that's got rings on the side and you pull the side left or right. Okay. Uh, it's a pretty nice tool and all, but it's not what you need because here's the problem. It's a side pull. It's for teaching a foundation of, of neck reining. You need a way to be able to touch underneath the chin and across the nose, all right? And that, so that you got breaks. So you need to start with the, with the ground communication kit and you need to go with the Mule Riders Martingale and use those two to build a foundation, not the side pull. And this other deal they call whoa mule. Somebody calls it whoa mule. It's called it's actually called a quick stop. Don't be using that, folks. That has nothing to deal, do with trail riding or building a foundation. It was originally designed for stopping. Side pull, originally designed to teach a neck ring. Okay. Uh, by the way, I heard about that uh, that saddle for sale in Belgium yeah. by somebody from Netherlands, the Netherlands. Who where is was. she at today? Yo, where yeah, is she where at? Is she? Yeah, I've actually talked to her a few times. She's her, her mule got cut up really bad. So here it is, folks. I trained a mule in the Netherlands on the cell phone. There you go. Now you've heard it all. Uh, let's see. Christine, uh, 95 degrees, Northwest Florida, 12 year old mini mule got in April. Still won't let me touch him. I'm told drive him. I'm told wait on him. What would Steve do to get back? Steve would put him in a small pen. Steve would walk in there with a come along rope every day. Steve would take him. When I say small pen, 20 by 20 would be the smallest. 10 by 20 is my favorite size. Now, every day I would go in there about feeding time, about feeding time. So if the mule's got something to look forward to seeing you coming. And I would take that rope and I would toss it at that mule. Everywhere he goes, I'd toss it, roll it up, toss it, roll it up, toss it. Every time I went toward that mule with that rope, that's me. That's my extension. That's my hand reaching out and touching that mule. Every time, pretty soon, very soon, in less than 10 minutes, actually, the mule's going to stand still and quiet, stand right there. Next thing you do, stay right there where you are, toss it around its feet, toss it around its back, Toss around his head. If he moves, keep on tossing, okay? And as soon as, as soon as you take, and as you're moving around in the pen there, as soon as you get three times going around by that gate that you're happy, quit today, okay? You, you're probably going to, I never like to put a time frame on, but you're probably going to have less than 20 minutes uh, a day, three times a, a week. And that's it, you know? So just use that rope. That's what I would do. Now, 12 years old, this mule already has a ton of knowledge that you don't want okay will it teach you something oh yeah you'll learn a lot but you'll also be getting frustrated okay so um maybe rehoming it might not be a bad idea but if you want a challenge keep on going with that meal just ground communication one thing to point out there that's a huge theme that we're going to hear over and over this season is that uh, the mule and the donkey communicate different than humans you think you're communicating one thing the mule and the donkey is hearing something completely different. P yep. Case in point, point in case, Steve was saying the rope is an extension of your hand. The mule doesn't differentiate. The donkey doesn't differentiate. Be like, oh, that hand has fingers. That hand is a rope. It's just, it's an extension of you. So when you get that rope around their feet, they see it as an extension of you. They don't, they don't know that it's not your body. So it's very important that we respect the unique way that these animals communicate. Because when you don't respect the way they communicate, 
Uh, number one, just flat out, you're not respecting creation. Like they were created uniquely. But number two, you're not going to get the re the results that you want. You're going to feel like I'm doing everything that I know to do. It's not a dog. It's not a cat. It's a mule. It's a donkey. It's an equine. And so we'll talk about that over and over. Dave sent in a message. He says, I was wondering what your thoughts are on for older mules for trail and packing. Mules around 20 years old uh, that are trained correctly, quote unquote, trained correctly, would be trail riding in spring and summer and using them for elk hunting in the fall. How many years will I have with that mule? Yeah, I've I've seen them last another three hours, and I've seen them like my wife's mule, 28. I've seen some of them like Uncle Bud's mules be in their 40s. You know, don't be afraid to ride them and use them. We rode Stacy clear up till she was 28 years old, and we give her a job. You know, so just use them. They're happiest when they're having something to do. Awesome. You have a, a few minutes for a few more questions, Steve? No, no, okay. no. Yeah. Uh, Jane sent this in. She says, um, we are so bummed. We just found out our mule has an old injury and it's causing him pain. Not limping or favoring it, but keeps abscessing at the coronet band. It's a bone spur from an old break. Hoping we can do something to fix so we can ride him. I'll include the x-ray for you to see, which I can send that to you, Steve, if you need it. Uh, our vet is checking with ortho at FSU to see what we can do. Never, ever thought this. Poor guy. He can't tell us. That could be why the bolting issue. Any help would be appreciated. Jan in Fl Jane in Florida. Yeah. Well, Jane, it can also be uh, 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 ring bone. So... Uh, I mean, there's possibly, you know, the burns, you know, broken spot at one time, but that's an awful difficult place. And of course, it's easy to break anything, but most likely ring bone would be my first thought. Then you can put some special shoes on them that are square toed in the front to keep you to break over quick. But otherwise, listen to your vet. He's probably got some great ideas and uh, and that college and they're always learning something. But uh, ask him about ring bone. Ask him about the rest of the hoof at that hairline, what it's like. How's it soft or is it hard? Another question. Uh, this one comes in from William. Would Steve, what could you recommend for a saddle for my grandchildren and the mini donkeys? Of course, I think your saddles would be too big for a child to ride on a mini donkey. What would you recommend, Steve? Well, uh, actually, folks, I, I really like to see folks that, you know, something like that rather than spend a lot of money with the mini donkeys, get themselves a uh, bareback pad with a handle on it. And, uh, and oh, wait a minute, Steve, I don't have any, any stirrups. That's right. Here's the problem. If they get hung up in a stirrup, you're going to get them dragged and you're going to get a kid hurt, okay? Let them learn to ride without their feet in the stirrups. It's the way my kids rode. It's the way they learned how to do it. I pulled the, the stirrups off. So they wouldn't get hung up. It's an awful thing, folks. Think about that, getting hung up and dragged. Bareback, bareback pad. Is that what you said? Bareback pad. Bareback pad. This one came from Steve. Handle on them. What's, oh yeah, a little handle on them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one came from Steve Young. I don't think it's the Hall of Fame quarterback, Steve Young, although please correct me if it is. Farrier that has trimmed my eight-year-old John Mule, Rudy, several times, but this time Rudy was a little fidgety when trimming rear feet. Front feet were no problem. The farrier got pretty rough with him, jerking his halter and making him back up, keeping it up longer than I thought appropriate, and Rudy got away from him. I caught him easily, but when the farrier walked up towards him, Rudy wheeled around and kicked him. I can pick up his feet, but I'm concerned Rudy will not stand for farrier again. Is there anything I can do before the farrier comes back so we don't have another train wreck? Okay, first of all, he was doing right by bumping. That's good. Second of all, he was doing wrong by using the wrong halter to do that. Now, when they're backing up, it's okay to let them back up for a bit. But with the come along hitch, you can eliminate that pretty darn quick. But they're going to back up a little bit and then turn them and have them back another way. Turn them and have them back another way. Not just straight back. Basically, he did the old technique of you don't want to stand still. Well, I'm going to make you move. And that that's okay. It's got its place. But come along hitch. Now, why the back foot all of a sudden? It wasn't all of a sudden. It was coming. Always, folks, when you pick up a back foot, you're on the left side, which is the near side. Your left hand goes on the hip, your right hand slides down the, hand, the, the leg, you bring the leg forward, 
then you go straight back and over to the left. That's how you uncock the hip. I'm sure you got some videos to send them out there, Dave. Already done. Especially the one. Yeah, and I figured you did. Especially the one, folks, you can see the mule fighting me. And a few minutes later, less than 15 minutes later, because of the come along hitch, I'm able to do what I want to do. Plus, I pick, pick up the foot incorrectly. Listen, farriers. And listen, people who have mules and donkeys. Bring the foot forward first. Uncock the hip. Then go straight back and over to the left. Don't do like horsemen do. Pick it straight up and pull it out. Don't do that because you're going to you're gonna hurt them. And, and, and the mule's going to finally say, I've had enough. That's the problem. It's folks thinking, oh, he's okay right now. He's okay. No, no. Folks, it is coming. The day's coming. Reckoning's coming. Next question. This one come in from, oh, actually, Reggie says, glad you're back. Glad we're back too, Reggie. Melissa says, um, or Kiki, do you recommend mammoths rather than standards for long distance driving? Thanks. They're both excellent. You know, I, I, I had a standard donk myself, loved him. I called him Superstition Jack. He was great. I could drive him. I could ride him, do whatever. Uh, but both are good. There you go. Uh, almost done here. We've got a question from Scott says, is it okay to use a fly mask on a mule? Absolutely. I, I would rather see you wear a fly mask than put fly spray on. All right. Is there any, okay. is there any concern why somebody wouldn't want to put a fly mask on them? Is there any reason why? I can't think of any reason. It's the safest, best way to be able to keep the flies from messing up with their, I've seen we, we actually had one that was given to us, a mule, that the eyelids had been eaten up so much by the flies that they actually hanged way down, mm. kind of like mine do right now. <laughs> um, Nina sent in a, a comment, said, um, the Delta variant is spreading in our nearby areas in North Florida. It's been bad here. Stay safe. I wanted to write you to say thank you for all your help when I wrote in about separating my donkey mare from the baby as he was still suckling at almost one year old. It worked. We put her in our yard for two months. Her milk bag dried up and now we put her back in with Bogo, the gelding, 15 months old. Yes, we got him gelded when he was nine months old, almost 10. Thank you. Good. Yeah, good. Well, there you are. Same thing with that other person who wanted to uh, to get their yep. mule. You know, um, yeah, we were talking about it earlier on. there. At the, yeah. I think straight up at the very beginning. Uh, Christine says, follow up. My mini mule, uh, let's see. Uh, my mini mule was broke to drive a cart by age two, but put with cows for the past nine years. I'm used to training horses. Monty has got me stumped. So she's experiencing some uh, some resistance there. Um, this is the one, let's see. Um, it sounds like this is the same one that wouldn't let her touch him. Uh, any other comments there, oh. Steve? Well, there again, he's out in the pasture. He don't need you. You know, period. Get him out of the pasture, put him back in a small pen and start building a foundation of I'm the important one and you need to do as I ask. All right. I think we're just about there. Uh, Kim, let's see. Christine says, thanks, Steve. He's in a, oh, this is the same thing. He's in a 10 by 20 dry pen. So that's good. Cindy says, glad you're back. Cindy in Tennessee, still learning every day with the mules and loving every minute. Well, almost. <laughs> there we go. Very good to have you here, Cindy. Last question for the day. This one comes in from Joseph. Steve, I recently had a fall from my Amish draft mule. Normally, he is very docile, but went from a slow walk to a bucking bronco. I use your trail light saddle, and I'm not sure if the rear girth hitch was too loose and maybe smacked his sheath, startling him. Only other thing was maybe a bee stung him. He stopped and stood still after I got launched off, so I'm trying to figure out what occurred so I can avoid a repeat of the same. Being a draft mule, our John mule is kind of pot-bellied, so it's hard to keep girth hitches in place. Thank you for your help. Um, there you go. What do you say, Steve? Okay, it's not hard to keep girth hitches into place if you have the right equipment, folks. Now, now, did you have a hobble strap between the two inches? Folks, four to six inches, you want the hobble straps. Next thing, your breaching. Did you have a breaching on? Sounds like you didn't have one, okay? Now, what happens? The saddle goes forward, the bumps the scapula, the mule goes to bucking because he's in pain, okay? 
<coughs> and I see it all the time. I've seen it today. And a couple pictures on on the internet. People riding a mule with a breast collar only and no breeching and no rear cinch. Folks, you got you're riding a mule. You got to ride with a breeching. You have got to ride with a tight rear cinch. And don't use a pulling collar. It won't work. Folks, I'm going to have uh, in the comment section here, we've got a mule saddle training course, and it's basically an instructional clinic that was all recorded down on the Andrada Ranch. Get the mule saddle training course. Uh, it's free. It's a great collection of videos, but it will double down uh, on the information Steve was just talking there about uh, proper saddle fit, proper equipment. It's most important to see how it all works together because it's not just having, oh, I've got the right saddle, nothing else matters. Oh, I've got the right bit, nothing else matters. It all works together. And you replace one piece with an incorrect piece, and you might not think it's going to make that big of a difference. But as we talked about earlier, a little change that you make today could show up six months from now in a variety of ways, some that will leave you not feeling so good physically. And of course, emotionally, it's not fun to not, not get the results that you want. So it's very important. Um, highly recommend going through the Mule Saddle training course. It's free. I just put the link in the comment section. That'll get you the education you need to see if, huh, I'm doing something incorrect right now and I do not want a, bunkin', a bunk, bucking Bronco down the line. So uh, let's see here. La uh, we'll do this. We'll do last question. This one came in last second from Kim. Struggling to get a halter on a wild BLM. He's driving, uh. going in both directions, trot and more energy, but still won't come all the way in. There you go. Last question there from Kim. Steve, what do you say? Same thing as we told the other person. Take the come along rope, toss it at them, toss it at them, toss it at them. Keep their feet going the direction you want. I always like to go counterclockwise first. And, and why counterclockwise? Because that's the left side. Very few people uh, will, uh, uh, I mean, I mean clockwise, because uh, very few people go to the right-hand side. They always go to the left-hand side. So always go clockwise, working with the right brain. Take that rope, toss it out there. Let them get used to being tossed on by that rope. There we go. That's it for this week. Welcome back. We're so glad that you were here. It had been a couple months, and so we're grateful to be able to kick up this fall stretch of uh, Ask Steve. We're going to be back here next Wednesday, same time. And so when Mountain Standard comes, the time, or uh, Mountain Day, or blah, blah, blah. When daylight savings time comes to an end, there will be a, sh a small shift, but that'll be sometime in November. We'll be back same time, same place next week. Come hang out with us. Bring any questions that you've got, anything that you're working through. Be sure to tell folks about us too. If you're not following us on Facebook or Instagram, we're there. We always put out a lot of really fun stuff and it would be really, really good to get to know you. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done here? No, nope. looking forward to seeing any of y'all uh, there in Springfield. Randy Figgins is going to be with me. Um, we're going to come back with a couple mules and this sort of thing. But, hey, if you see me, come on over and say hi. I may even give you one of my cards. If you can't, if you didn't get enough Steve Edwards and Mule and Donkey Talk, uh, go to YouTube, search for Queen Valley Mule Ranch. You will not only find instructional videos by Steve, but you'll find every episode we've ever done of the Ask Steve show there. There's probably a hundred hours of footage right there for you to watch. Go ahead, check it out, and we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. God bless. Yeah.